Welcome to a new Draw My Life video. It all started one night, the night Jeffrey Woods, also known as Jeff the Killer, went completely crazy and killed his parents and his sweet brother Lou Woods. Jeff became a soulless monster whose only desire was to kill. But was Lou really dead after so many cuts and stab wounds? No, Jeff's brother survived this brutal attack. Full of rage, he made it through, eager to live. Then it all turned black and he passed out until the police found him nearly dead, next to his already dead parents. Lou spent some months in a coma in the hospital after many transplants, surgery and stitches, and one day he finally woke up. When he opened his eyes, he thought he saw an angel. It was Susan, the nurse in charge of taking care of him. She got really excited when she saw him. She'd been waiting for him to wake up for a long time. Hi, I'm Susan. I hope you get well soon and wish you the best of luck. She whispered in his ear. Days went by and Susan was always there, taking care of him with a smile on her face. Lou couldn't stop admiring her. He admired the fact that though he wasn't able to talk or even move yet, she was always there for him without losing heart. This gave him the strength to keep on. Without a doubt, Lou was falling in love. What he didn't know was that the pretty nurse had fallen for him as well. After some days, the doctor went into his room and explained the surgery he was about to go through was very delicate, but he trusted him as he was a very strong boy. Then they moved him to the surgery room. The surgeon said, Count to ten, little by little you will start falling asleep, and when you wake up you'll feel better than ever. Lou counted, peacefully, but when he reached number ten he still felt awake. He wanted to move, but he couldn't. It was as if his body had fallen asleep, but not him. Then he felt a cold knife lying on his chest. The knife started to cut and the pain was almost unbearable, and it didn't end. Each cut was more painful than the previous one. He couldn't help but remember Jeff cutting him once and again with his knife, saying, shh, don't worry, go to sleep. When he woke up, the first thing Lou saw was his angel, Susan, with beautiful smile on her face. He felt so happy when he saw her that he was able to say, hey, Susan, I'm Lou. I hope we can go out together when I'm out of here. She started crying, excited, and accepted without hesitating. Finally, the day came for Liu to recover 100%, and that same night he met Susan. It all went amazing, she was perfect for him. But Liu wasn't over the incident with his brother yet. He felt going back to his old house would help him move on. He was afraid to go on his own though, so he asked Susan if she'd go with him. Of course, Liu, I'd do anything for you. When they got to the house, they found the door had been locked, probably by the police, to avoid people breaking in. Together, they pushed it once, twice, three times, and the door opened with difficulty. A strong, musty and rotten smell reigned in the house. It was all very dark until little by little the eyes of the couple got used to the darkness and were able to see the horror Jeff had caused. The bodies were gone. However, stains of blood were all around. The house had accumulated a fine and dense layer of dust. For Liu, it was like living again the day his crazy brother went back home. They went upstairs and the closer they got to his room, the worse the scene was. They then got to his room's entrance, surrounded by a police cordon. Liu cut it in silence and opened the door. His room was the worst of all. There was blood everywhere and on the wall at the end of the room they could read the sentence, go to sleep. When he read this, he froze. He suddenly fell onto the floor and started screaming. Ah! He couldn't forget each and every stop from Jeff. Going back to the house had been a bad idea. Lou couldn't stop thinking about his brother. He heard him inside his head. Shh, go to sleep. Jeff. I'll see you in hell when we're both dead. Liu wanted to kill him, stab him over and over again. A strong thirst for death and revenge invaded his body. Liu, hun, are you okay? Asked Susan from the stairs. He grabbed a knife from the floor and ran to the door, and there was Susan, with her angel face. 
He was so close to doing something stupid. What had happened to him in that room? He calmed down, and they both left the house together. Susan saw him trembling and scared. I'll take care of you today, she said with her beautiful smile. On their way home, a thief robbed them and stole Susan's purse, hurting her. A huge rage invaded Lou, and he felt like running after the thief. But it wasn't normal rage, no. It was a kind of rage that urged him to kill with his own hands. He wanted to do it with all his strength. He told Susan to go home, he grabbed the knife, and he killed the thief. After stabbing him several times, Lou then realized his thirst for killing was real. He had gone crazy. He thought it wouldn't take long for him to kill again. Nobody would hurt Susan ever again. But he couldn't just go around killing everybody. He wasn't Jeff, so he decided to kill only bad people. Time went by and more and more people had been killed by Lou. He bought a leather suit, so it'd be easier to clean it. He was sick of having blood stains on his clothes. It was a peaceful night, and he went out to a restaurant with Susan to celebrate their anniversary. Lou felt more in love than ever, so he made the most out of the date and asked her to marry him. Obviously, Susan said yes. It all seemed perfect, until on the way out, a damned soul came with a gun and shot. Susan fell on the floor. The ambulance took too long and Susan died. Full of rage, he turned against the doctors in it. If they had been faster, maybe his angel could still be alive. He killed them all, but this didn't heal the pain the death of his loved one was causing. So he grabbed a surgical knife and he cut the shape of a smile on his face and then sewed it so nobody would see he was really suffering inside. Then he sewed the date of Susan's death in his chest, next to his heart, so he'd never forget that this cruel world had taken from him the only thing he loved. From that moment on, Liu Woods is called Homicidal Liu, and he wanders around, killing all people who seems to be happy. If he can't be happy, then nobody should be. Today we tell you the story of Jane Arkansas, aka Jane the Killer, a girl next door to Jeff. Jane used to watch Jeff from the window from time to time. He was new in the neighborhood and she was curious about him. One day she was late for school and saw Randy and his gang threatening Jeff and his brother Lou. She knew perfectly that Randy was a bully who made everyone pay money or a recessed snack in exchange for not getting beaten up. She looked back and saw how Randy stole Lou's bag and pushed Jeff to the ground. Then he stood up, and Jane said to herself, Stay seated, don't be stupid. Then she saw how Jeff lunged at Randy. Then he grabbed Troy, who fell to the ground screaming in pain. Jane was surprised. It seemed that Jeff was having too much fun. <laughs> the next thing that came was the sound of police car sirens, and Jane's father, who was a policeman, came out of his house and got into the car. Jane went with her parents to school, and they told her very clear that they didn't want her to talk to Jeff so she didn't see him again until the end of the day. When she saw him leave class, she noticed as if Jeff was pretending to be happy so that people would not suspect the crime he had committed, but in reality he was showing a slightly sadistic smile. It was like the smile of a madman, Jane thought. The next day, Jane looked out the window and saw a police car in front of Jeff's house. She thought that they would take Jeff for what he had done, but she was wrong. Instead of him, they arrested Liu. Then she saw Jeff crying for what happened. From that moment, people started to spread many poisonous rumors about Liu. Days later, Jeff's next-door neighbor threw a birthday party, and Jane watched through the window as the kids were having fun, until Randy and his friends jumped over the fence. Randy lunged at Jeff and knocked him down, then Troy and Jake pulled out some guns, and then Jane knew they were going to kill him. She decided to call the police. After hearing some shots, she looked again. She saw the flames of fire and heard screams, so she grabbed a fire extinguisher and headed towards the house. But when she got there, she saw Jeff sitting on the stairs burning with flames. He had singed skin, and Jane passed out. When she woke up, she was in the hospital and asked about Jeff. The nurse told her that she couldn't let her see him, even if she was his girlfriend. To which she replied with a trembling voice, He's not my boyfriend. So she left the room, saw Jeff's parents, who thanked her for having tried to save their son. They told her that Jeff was wearing bandages, that they would be removed in a few days, and that when the time came, they would let her know. Then she recounted everything she saw when Jeff got into a fight with Randy's gang, 
and Jeff's parents said that if it was true, they would set Liu free in a few days. Days later, Jane's classmates started picking on her because they thought she had a crush on Jeff. Liu appeared and told her that Jeff's bandages would be removed the next day. The next morning, Jane saw Jeff's parents' car parked and she was very happy. But when she saw Jeff get out of the car, her face changed with shock. His previously brown hair was now black, his skin was white, and with the same sadistic smile that she saw the same day he had a fight with Randy. Then she saw how Jeff was staring at her with those wide and scary eyes. Then Jane came into her house, and the parents asked her what was wrong, to which Jane responded with a shriek and passed out. When Jane woke up, it was already dark, and her parents were not home. She got out of bed in a black dress, went downstairs and saw that the kitchen light was on. There was a note on the table that said, Are you going to come and eat dinner? Your friends are here. After reading this, Jane began to shake, and saw through the window that the lights of Jeff's house were on. Then she saw Jeff leaning against the window of her house, looking at Jane with a knife in his hand, tapping on the window and smiling. Scared, Jane took a knife and ran out of the house. She went to Jeff's house very scared. She closed her eyes and went inside. With her eyes still closed, she heard someone say, You've made it. I'm glad, my friend. Jane screamed. She saw that Jeff's eyes were big and unblinking, and his smile was red. His clothes were covered in blood. Jane passed out again. When she woke up, she was at a dining table, her knife missing. Sitting around the table were Jeff's parents and his friends, all dead with smiles carved into their faces. She tried to scream, but she was gagged. Tears of blood were coming out of her eyes. Look who's finally awake. Jane looked to her side and saw that Jeff was there. She tried to scream, but Jeff was behind her, putting a knife to her throat and said, Shut up. Shut up. Friends shouldn't be yelled at. I'm sure you're furious because you don't look as beautiful as them, but don't worry. I'll soon make you look beautiful too. Jeff cut the gag with the knife. Jane looked in his eyes and whispered, Fuck you. Jeff went out and Jane began to cry thinking about her family. Jeff came back. Don't cry, he said. Jane saw that he was holding a jug of bleach and a can of gasoline. So he poured the bleach and gasoline into her. Don't worry, I've already called the fire department, Jeff told her. And then he lit the fire. As soon as the fire came in contact with Jane, she burst into huge flames, and Jeff stormed off saying, See ya, my dear friend. I hope you become as beautiful as I am. When Jane woke up, she was back in the hospital and her head was pounding. Then a nurse informed her that her family had died in the fire. Then Jane started crying. Upon waking up again, she saw that she no longer had bandages and that there were several bouquets of flowers. She had slept for two weeks straight. Give me a mirror, Jane said. Seeing herself, she threw the mirror to the ground in horror. Her face was completely burned. A package arrived and Jane was about to open it. Inside, there was a white mask with black around the hollow of the eyes and with a smile painted in black. There was also a black wig, a bouquet of black roses, and a sharp kitchen knife. And there was a note, Jane, I'm sorry you're not as beautiful as I am, but this will cover your face while you recover. And you left the knife at my house, so I thought I'd give it back to you. After reading it, she left the hospital, put on her wig and went to the cemetery, saw her parents' graves and cried for the last time, then put on her mask and grabbed the knife with all her might. Since that day, Jane swore revenge, and every time the sun goes down, she goes looking for Jeff to find him and kill him. Jane's motto says the opposite of Jeff's, don't go to sleep, in order to avoid Jeff get to do the same to more innocent victims. Jeff the Killer is the protagonist of one of the most famous creepypasta on the internet. He was born after the appearance in forums of a disturbing picture in 2008. These creepypastas are short horror stories, collected and shared on the internet, intended to scare or disturb readers. The name comes from the word copypasta, which is used to describe how these stories are copied and pasted by users in discussion forums. Even though the real origin of the story is unknown, a lot of people believe it started in 4chan, one of the most famous and biggest forums on the internet. There, a little girl called Katie Robinson shared a picture of herself in her bedroom. It didn't take long for offensive comments to appear, teasing her because of her weight, etc. This girl ended up committing suicide because of the bullying she suffered. It is said that this picture was the one used to inspire the terrifying image of Jeff, turned into a meme right away. 
After all of this, the snowball effect did its work. The story started growing because of forum users. They started speculating about a fictitious origin of the gloomy character. By chance, the story starts just like Katie's, an innocent child named Jeff who suffered bullying at school. As a teenager, he moved to a different village with his family, trying to escape from the views. There, he's attacked by three boys he didn't know who tried to rob him. But Jeff, under an uncontrollable rage, brutally beats them up. His brother Liu, who was with him, was indicted and jailed. Sometime after this, when things were starting to go back to normal, Jeff was invited to a birthday party at his neighbor's. Surprisingly, the boys who tried to rob him showed up looking for revenge. Jeff kills two of them, but the third one covers him up with bleach and alcohol and sets him up on fire. After the attack, he starts losing his mind. He burns his eyelids so he can see his face every time he looks in a mirror, and he cuts his cheeks so he always looks like he's smiling. He finds himself beautiful. His mother went to the bathroom following the sounds Jeff was making and looked at him, completely transformed. Scared, she ran to her room looking for her husband and telling him to grab his shotgun. Jeff, before they could do anything, stabs them to death. Shortly after, he does the same to his brother Liu. And this is how the story of Jeff the Killer was born, an assassin who enters houses when people are sleeping and takes as many human lives as possible. This creepypasta has derived into several incarnations of Jeff, all of them following the original story, with recurring characters such as Jane the Killer, the nemesis of Jeff. The story, twisted as no other, has become viral and it has been adapted even to a video game. The famous meme still appears on the internet even as avatar pictures for the users. Along with Slenderman, Jeff the Killer is one of the most famous characters in the darkest side of the internet. Nina Hopkins, 11 years old, was moved to a new school to be closer to home. One Sunday morning, the day before her first day of classes at her new school, she woke up, went to the bathroom and brushed her teeth, then went back to bed with her computer. Nina wasn't one of those motivated girls who got up with energy to open the window and let in the light, to take advantage of the morning to ride a bike. No, she simply enjoyed watching anime, listening to music, and playing the guitar, like rock, J-pop, pop. That Sunday, without much emotion, Nina wanted to reread for the thousandth time the origin of Jeff the Killer. She loved creepy pasta, and Jeff was her favorite. She felt a strange attraction towards him. Every time she read it, she felt a strange impulse. While enjoying her reading, she suddenly heard the door. She looked up from the screen and met her little brother Chris and his beautiful green eyes. Chris was Nina's prince. She adored him and she used to call him that because every night, she told him fairy tales from the forest to put him to sleep. Chris had black hair and white skin, just like his late father. Instead, Nina was light brown hair and blue eyes. She was very similar to her mother. Chris was calling her to eat, so they went downstairs. The next morning, Nina and Chris started classes at their new school. Nina dressed in one of her favorite shirts, a black skirt, striped tights, and a purple sweater. As she put on her bag, she felt something strange, like a tug. Something strange was happening. A strange little smile formed on her mouth. When they got to school, the brothers split up to go to class. <laughs> In the break, they went to eat together. They chose a quiet and calm place in the back garden, where there was hardly anyone. As they chewed on their sandwich, a much older, rough-looking girl approached. Oh, what do we have here? New students, the girl announced. My name is Claudia, and I rule this school. And if you don't obey what I say, you will pay dearly. She took a knife out of her jeans, and suddenly two boys came out of a nearby tree. They were Melkon and Yoni. Nina got up and stood in front of Chris to protect him. They didn't want any trouble. They just had a quiet lunch. The brothers had settled in the wrong area. It already had an owner. Chris didn't agree with that situation and got up. We haven't done anything. We're just here quietly eating. Suddenly, Yoni hit him and Chris fell into Nina's arms. Chris! Nina exclaimed, holding him in her arms. Nina hit Claudia in the face, knocking her to the ground then pounced on her, taking the knife from her and stabbing it into Claudia's shoulder. Melkon held Nina from behind and caught her in his arms. Nina kicked him hard in the crotch of the boy knocking him to the ground. 
Nina defended herself as best as she could. Yoni ran out, but Nina grabbed the knife and threw it at him, stabbing him in the stomach. Nina, enough! She heard his brother's voice. Chris was scared and surprised. The brothers went home to change their clothes and wash them because they were stained with blood. Nina felt strange, like she had an incipient sense of killing. She opened her closet finding her collection of Jeff the Killer posters, badges, some old notebooks, dolls, and stuffed animals. She looked at them with love and fear and said, Jeff, do you do this to me? After the incidents, they searched and searched for the culprits of the fight, but they didn't find them. They wouldn't think she was an 11-year-old girl like Nina. The weeks passed relatively quietly. One day, Nina opened her locker finding a note that said, I know what you did, but don't worry, I won't tell anyone. You're clever, but dangerous. It had no signature. Nina was getting more and more unhinged. One afternoon, sweet Prince Chris came home beat up. Yoni, Claudia, and Mel Khan had taken revenge. Nina was on edge, but she barely controlled herself. When they returned to school, they found them in the corridor. The battle was brutal. Nina pushed Chris aside and ran into the cleaning room and picked up a knife. Her urge to kill grew by the moment. She left the room and went through Joni's head, which released a jet of blood. The blood fell on Nina's face, and there, just at that moment, something broke in Nina, like a thread, the thread that divided the madness of sanity. Claudia and Malcone took a few steps back. Nina turned to her side, showing a psychotic smile, making even Chris shiver. Nina went crazy, attacking them all. Nina, you feel good? Chris said, horrified. Nina turned around. Feeling all right. I feel excellent. Come on, my prince. We must go home. In the middle of the night, Nina got up and went to the kitchen. Where are you, Bleach? Nina growled, searching. Did you look for this? Nina heard a voice behind her turned around and she was met with a comforting surprise to see a boy in the kitchen doorway holding the can of bleach. The boy had extremely white skin, his hair was black and singed, and he had a coarse and hideous smile. Oh, Jeff the Killer, pleaded Nina with a somewhat defiant look. I've been watching you. It seems to me that your head is already prepared. You're right, I need that bottle of bleach, if you'll excuse me, the girl added, shaking her hand for him to give it to her. Jeff opened it, then lit a match and threw it at her, causing Nina to burst into flames. Nina fainted and became unconscious. She woke up in the hospital next to her mother and her little brother. After a month of recovery, it was time to remove the bandages. Nina saw her mother's and brother's frightened faces. What? What happened? Sister, Chris said, hugging her. Y you keep yourself just as pretty as before. She ran to a mirror and saw that she had a white face and singed black hair like Jeff's and she was very happy. Nina was no longer the innocent girl she had been. Now, she was a monster. <laughs> they went home, and Nina was happy with her new face, although she thought it would need some repairs, so she cut her face making a smile on her face. Then she took the knife and went to her mother's room and told her, Look mom, I'm beautiful. The scared mother ran away. Nina chased her and killed her. Chris saw her and got too scared. Chris, Chris. Chris? Little sister, are you okay? I'm better than ever. Oh, come on, Chris, come on. I wouldn't do anything to you. Don't worry, she said with a disturbing smile. You know, I feel more beautiful than ever. And I'll start a new life in the fairy forests. Do you want to come with me? Chris nodded. You just have to go to sleep, my prince. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more Draw My Life videos, subscribe to our channel. See you on the next episode.